family it's time to pray i want to look at psalm 68 in our evening time as we have one central driving focus one thought that we want to resonate in the in the heart and lives of our people don't stop praying don't stop praying because our world literally is depending on the prayers of the people of god psalm 68 when you get a chance read it in its entirety but i want to show you a few verses out of that text to build our thought on this evening. At verse number 19, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden, the God who is our salvation. God is to us a God of deliverance, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. Look at verse 28. Your God has commanded your strength. Show yourself strong, O Lord, who have acted on our behalf. Then verse 35. O God, you are awesome. From your sanctuary, the God of Israel gives himself or himself gives strength and power to the people. Blessed be God. Beautiful text that reminds us of why we ought to always keep praying. This passage drives a couple of really powerful thoughts that David gives us. It's a reminder of who God is and a reminder of where we are. It's also a reminder of certain things that are at stake. Two things in particular, two reasons why this psalm pushes you. Don't stop praying. Number one, don't stop praying because your focus is at stake. Throughout the text, the, the Bible reminds us of the value we have to God, but also the value of human life to us. It reminds you that you are valuable and how you value other people is critical. Someone has said that the value you place on yourself is usually the value others will place on you. And you need to remember, this psalm reminds you 
It drives the thought that you are wonderful to God. Psalm 139 is another text that tells you that. You are, hold the value of who you are in your heart. You are more than a conqueror. You are a son and a daughter of God. Galatians chapter 4. You are more than able. You are precious to God. This text reminds you as you think about God doting over you and caring over you. And then as you reflect in a world and in a, in a, in a, in a society in which you and I need to hear that people matter. That, that you and I matter, that black lives matter, that souls matter to God. We need to hear that over and over again, that we have value. God believes you have value. When you pray, it's a reminder of your value. But we're also praying to our God to help other people to see their own value and to help them to show their value reflexively and, and intrinsically to others. You can't stop praying. I can't stop praying. Don't stop praying because our focus is at stake. But then number two, don't stop praying because our furtherance is at stake. Another beautiful part in this text is that we know when we pray that our prayers help us to remember that we matter to God, but then also we need to remember that God matters to the world. In our thinking, the furtherance that, that, that who God is in a world that needs him desperately is seen in this passage. You go back and look over the passages that we've looked at. When you pray, it reminds you of the power of who God is. It reminds you of the capability and the possibility of our God. We're in a season right now that we've never been in before. No, no other time that we know of, especially in American history, where we can think about a pandemic that's sweeping the world in conjunction to a time where it's original sin, it's unrepented sin of racism is wrecking the lives of people in broad daylight on public, in a public eye like never before. And so we pray that God changes things. We pray that God moves. We pray for the possibility of God to move and affect and change and reorient our world. But let me remind you of something. When you start talking to God and thinking about his possibility, you can't go to God saying that we want you to change because we believe you can do the impossible, but then have doubt when you pray. When you pray, you can't carry the language of doubt to a God of infinite possibility. Move beyond your limited be belief and pray to God in a way where you are seeking the creator of your reality to address the sicknesses and the situations in our human construct. We are asking God as we dream and we envision and we see beyond the moment to ask God to do those things that are well within his capacity to move in a way where he's, he's unlimited in what he can do as we seek after him and ask God. We need to see healing. We need to see hope. We need to see community, see civility, see justice, see economic equality, see change, see the kingdom of God come, see the, the peace of God, see God move and his hand reach beyond what's going on and change everything around us. When we pray then, we don't stop praying because we're asking God to do what only God can do. We can't change the hearts of man, hearts and minds of man, but God can we can't heal our world of an unseen virus, but God can. We can't move governmentally to change policy and procedure and people, but God can. We can move in a way where we follow the move of God and the heart of God, but that will take the people of God praying without ceasing. So don't stop praying. In fact, let's go to God right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We thank you for being the one who hears us, the one who delivers, the one who moves in a way where change can truly take place through you. We ask you, oh God, right now that you be the one who blesses us to see your movement throughout our world. Bless those that need your healing. Bless those that need your strength. Bless those that need your power to affect change in their life. God, we pray that you rise up in a way where you mobilize your people to be the voice that they need to be in a world that needs your word. We pray that you move your people to be light in dark places, to be healing and balm in a world that's hurting and dealing with disease. We pray, Father, that you bless our government, bless those that are working, bless those that are dealing with sickness even right now. Bless and strengthen families that have forgotten the power that you have to bring them and complete them and keep them together. Bless and keep our world 
tightly held into your hand. Father, help us to remember that you are the creator. Help us to remember that you are our shepherd. Help us to remember that you are our light. You are our shield. You are our strength. You are our stronghold. We love you. We honor you. We praise you and we bless you. Help us to never grow tired of calling on you because only through you will we truly have change. God, we ask that you bless us. We ask that you heal. We pray that you move in a way that you get yourself some glory even on today. We love you. We thank you. We laud and we we adore you. Bless us, your God. Oh God, your, your people. Bless us to keep on talking to you moment by moment, season by season, day by day. We honor and adore you. In the name of Jesus, we together say amen. Amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Pray to God because your focus is at stake. But then keep praying because your furtherance, the furtherance of our world is at stake. See value in others and see the one who can make change all over the world. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. I want to be I want to be me near the cross, where my Savior died, on a hill so lonely. I don't doubt you, Lord, but I just want to touch where they pierce you in the side. The blood can stream me down, stream me down. There's no greater, no greater love that was ever shown. For your suffering, for your suffering, for the way that you hurt, you bled, for the pain that you endured on Calvary's cross. If I had one plea, if I had one plea, it would be Jesus keeping me near the cross, near the cross. At your cross, there's forgiveness. At your cross, there is mercy. At your cross, there is love.